what do you say about the nature of a, a, a gendered God? This is from a person who feels like um, a woman who's, 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 uh, who's the fact that God is presented as gendered has, has played a part in their rejection of that word. Yeah. Um, and you know, God, God representing patriarchy, representing oppression. You know, in your book, Brad, you say He is always with you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, have you got anything to say about how how God is gendered? Yeah, I don't. I, I when I was when I decided to use that as the title of the book, I had a lot of long email conversations with my editor about different ways we might remove the gendered pronoun from the from the title and preserve the title as it was and every time we try to we tried a bunch of different wordings and every time every one of them just seemed to call so much attention to the fact that we had uh, changed changed the gender of god that it that that became the fo it just seemed like that was the focus you know and, and it was no longer this this question of there is there is no god and he always, he's always with you and maybe i should have just uh, picked a different title because that because that was such a problem. But I really, really liked that uh, that statement, uh, and I really wanted to go into it. And I thought, well, we just have to. And so I put a, a couple of paragraphs in the introduction to the book saying, I don't think God has a gender. You know, I'm not trying to present a God as a male figure or anything like that. This is just the linguistic convention. You know, you just because the English language is built the way it is, you have to you have to use a pronoun in there and the common pronoun for God is is he and that's just you know we're just stuck with that linguistically and and, and that's you know that's all there is to it it doesn't really mean anything further than that it was good to you know I, I lived in Japan for 11 years as I said and I, I uh, speak Japanese you know not as well as I used to but um, in Japanese you rarely have to use a, a, a you rarely use pronouns at all because pronouns pronouns are a whole uh, issue in Japan that we don't have in the English language because every pronoun gives a social rank. So, so you have to be very careful if you're going to use a pronoun and which is why the language tends to just avoid them entirely. So this problem doesn't even come up in Japanese. But no, I don't think God has a gender and I think it would be silly to insist that, that, uh, that he does. <laughs> so I just found myself having to say, to say he, he doesn't have a gender because it doesn't have a gender. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Thanks, Brad. Anything you want to add, Stephen, or can we move on to another um, question? Well, uh, to, to me, the, the, the gendering of God is just a very good reason not to use the word at all. Yeah. Uh, because um, it, it, that's the problem. If you have a personal God, it has to be male or female. Yeah. Uh, we have the same issue at places like Gaia House, for example. The Buddha image, it's a male. But Buddha isn't male or female. And um, frankly, I think we should go back to the pre-iconic um, uh, period of Buddhism uh, before the emergence of Buddha images uh, you just would have a stupa which is non-gendered it's just a, a reminder or an empty seat or a tree uh, there you get round this problem altogether but as soon as you represent uh, the Buddha or God uh, in any remotely personalized form you yeah. are bound to you, you cannot in the English, at least, you cannot get around the problem of gender. And that, I think, shows to me uh, the, the extreme limitations uh, that uh, uh, any personification of, of ultimacy uh, has. Uh, don't, I would just drop the whole thing and try to find a, 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 a non-gendered, uh, an iconic um, language that uh, just, it's not necessary, so why bother with it at all?